So I'll just start again. My name is Martin Kelly, and I'm the director here at KOM Consultants, based in Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario. KOM Consultants are the official Canadian representative and application centre for the University of Adelaide. So we welcome you to the session tonight. Uh, joining me this evening is Brooke Blackburn from Australia. So that's the other person you see on the screen. And Brooke will be presenting on behalf of the University of Adelaide for the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry. So there, there's different students on here at different aspects uh, of the process, Brooke. So there's some that are just joining us for some general information about the programs. There's others that are in the application process uh, and they're wanting information on when offers may come out and deadlines. So just to recap for the students for medicine and dentistry, application deadlines are towards the end of June for University of Adelaide. They also require students to have the UCAT uh, test um, as part of the admissions process. So that UCAT, the deadline is sometime in May. You don't actually have to have the results, but you have to have your um, examination sitting booked, a, a time and a date booked for the application submission, okay? So a little about KOM Consultants. As I mentioned, we're the Canadian representative for University of Adelaide. Uh, our services to you are absolutely free of charge. We've been helping the Canadian students for 30 years now. And over that time, we've assisted over 10,000 Canadian students achieve their goals at studying overseas in Australia and some other destinations. Um, when you're ready, if you, if you haven't applied at this point, when you're ready to do so, it's a simple process. All you have to do is jump on the KOM Consultants website, which is, that's basically our address. It's komconsultants.com. Up in the top left corner of the homepage, you'll hit the apply tab, jot in your details, jot in the University of Adelaide, medical program, dental program, hit submit, It'll take you about five minutes. At that point, one of our admissions officers will reach out to you to guide you through the process and the supporting documents. Um, on that note, I should mention that one of my colleagues, Sue Dorman, who manages the applications for medicine and dentistry, who many have probably spoken to over the phone and email, uh, she's also on this chat. So uh, I, I don't think her camera is working and I'm not sure about her audio, but certainly she'll be in the chat box. So um, what I'll do at this point is I will turn it over to you, Brooke, and then you can share your screen and go through your presentation. I will turn off my camera and my audio, but I will be here for the duration of the presentation. So we'll, we'll have Brooke do the presentation, then we can certainly open it up to question and answer period. Okay. Uh, I'll just leave it with you, Brooke, now, Brooke, okay? Thanks, Martin. Uh, good morning, uh, our time to everyone. Good evening to you. Um, so I'm just going to pop up our screen. Um, Martin, can you just um, confirm that you can see my screen with just a chat? Yeah, I, I can see your screen now, Brooke. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, um, my name's Brooke and I work here in the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences. As uh, Martin mentioned, today I'll introduce you to the university and our dentistry and medical um, degrees. Um, but first I thought we'd have a little bit of a look at um, what it would be like for you to live and to study in Adelaide, South Australia. I do have a little video that uh, we are having some um, technical issues with getting that um, loaded. Um, but um, this uh, image is in the heart of um, Adelaide, crossing the bridge um, to the river that runs um, alongside um, the university and um, the main sort of precinct down to our Health and Medical Sciences building. Um, it connects the Convention Centre precinct where um, lots of festivals and um, conferences and that sort of thing happen um, across to our um, fairly new uh, um, sporting stadium where predominantly cricket um, and our Australian Football League uh, games are played. So um, this picture sort of shows people migrating over to the uh, football uh, and um, sort of connecting one side of the river to the next. Uh, so um, in lieu of the video not working, 
I guess I'll just give you some um, stats on um, living in Adelaide and I'll send through the links to the videos for Martin and Sue to share with you um, in the next couple of days. Um, Adelaide's consistently voted one of the world's most livable and affordable cities. It has a growing population, but as you can see by the image here, uh, the city is still full uh, of open green spaces with minimal traffic congestion. This makes getting around really easy, um, pleasant and safe. Our peak hour traffic is, um, uh, people from other states uh, have a bit of a giggle when we say peak hour traffic, it really doesn't take much time at all um, to get around the city. We love our food and wine and have a huge variety of cafes, restaurants, festivals and entertainment options during February and March in our summer time. Um, it's often referred to locals as Mad March. Uh, we have um, the city hosting world renowned cultural events like the Adelaide Fringe Festival with comedians and, um, and performing artists, as well as the Adelaide Festival and uh, the music festival WOMAD, um, or as it is called in Adelaide, WOMADelaide. As I mentioned, if sport's more your thing, you can cheer on um, one of our uh, Australian Football League teams or cricket um, at the Adelaide Oval, which, as I mentioned, is just located um, over, the, over the bridge. And you can see that building, the, um, the white sails uh, on the right-hand side of your screen. That's the Adelaide Oval looking um, over the parklands. Uh, South Australia is also globally renowned for its premium wine regions, such as the Barossa Valley. Um, we've got a beautiful stretch of um, sandy beaches, so you can always find a spot on a beach where you may be the only, only one, even in the metropolitan um, areas. There's plenty of space to stretch out, um, as well as um, sort of more natural um, environment, the Flinders Ranges and the iconic Australian outback. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, there's plenty uh, to keep you entertained if you need a break from your studies um, or hopefully when your family and friends um, can all come to visit you. The University of Adelaide itself is one of the, is the third oldest university in Australia. It's a member of the Group of Eight and we're ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world. We're associated with five Nobel Prize winners and have produced 112 Rhodes Scholars. These are just some uh, sort of fast facts about the university. We've just got over 3,000 staff members, 28,000-ish uh, students. Um, of those, there's about 30% international students and they're represented by 100 countries across the world. Uh, we've got uh, three campuses, the North Terrace campus, which um, is uh, shown to you in this picture here. Um, it is, has the historical sandstone buildings and it is blended um, throughout with modern architecture and um, facilities, as well as plenty of out, beautiful outdoor spaces for our students to enjoy. We've also got the Wake campus, which is located in the Adelaide foothills, but that's primarily for our wine and agriculture students and then Roseworthy, uh, which is 50 kilometres north of the CBD, and that's um, for our veterinary science, agri agriculture and um, natural resource management. The Faculty of Medical, Health and Medical Sciences itself uh, is ranked number one in South Australia for medicine, dentistry, nursing and psychology. Our alumni um, accounts for 24 of the University of Adelaide Rhodes Scholars and two Nobel uh, Prize winners. One of the most notable um, of the alumni is Lord Howard Florey. He was awarded uh, a Nobel Prize for his role in the development uh, of penicillin, which you um, no doubt would all have had at some stage um, in your lives so far. So that's one of our, um, our, our alumni from the University of Adelaide. In more recent times, um, this uh, is Isabel Marshall on the left hand side. She's one of our current medical students and she was just named Young Australian of the Year 2021. Uh, Isabel created a business alongside her friend um, and they developed an 
ethically sourced um, organic women's care products with the profits from their social enterprise going towards disadvantaged girls and women overseas. So um, she's sort of, um, you know, working uh, along the lines of health and health promotion, um, off her own back um, in her spare time from being a medical student um, and doing great things for um, people across the world. And we have Sarah Short, Dr. Sarah Short. She is one of our graduates from um, medicine and also honours degree of health and medical sciences. And she's just become the university's 112th Rhodes Scholar. She was awarded one of only the three uh, Australian Rhodes Scholarships. Um, and she'll be for, and that's for Oxford, Oxford University. And she plans to undertake a master's um, by research in surgical sciences. Um, our faculty is divided up into uh, seven schools, including the Adelaide Dental School and Medical School, which I'll go into a little bit more detail about, but we also have um, five other areas of health and they're divided up into their respective schools as well. As I mentioned, um, <clears throat> the, our faculty is currently ranked first for medicine, dentistry, nursing and psychology in the state, so the state of South Australia. In Australia, our dentistry program is ranked uh, number one. Um, and then you can see where we stand with the global rankings um, listed on the right hand side. Uh, our Health and Medical uh, Sciences building um, is the flagship teaching and research facility. Uh, it's the home of the medical, nursing and dental schools as well as the Adelaide Dental Hospital on one of the upper levels. Uh, this is where students work alongside professional dentists um, on their placements to deliver oral health care to services of the community. So that's a public um, dental hospital um, organisation. Building is situated in uh, the largest health and medical um, precinct in the Southern Hemisphere. So it's alongside our um, major Royal Adelaide Hospital and the South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute in a central location um, and shared facilities. Uh, this inspires collaboration between um, staff, researchers and students across all health disciplines. So it's a really exciting place to be located. Over the 14 floors of our building, uh, we have four floors of laboratories, which brings together multidisciplinary research collaborations. We've got three lecture theatres where our students um, and staff um, attend lectures and seminars. We've got the Adelaide Health Simulation Facility and a clinical research facility as well that works um, in developing um, and testing uh, various um, health uh, innovations. As you can see by the building, it's um, very architecturally uh, designed um, and there's lots of social, unique social uh, and study spaces and amenities within the building and it's a really vibrant place to study. So this um, just mentions a few of the uh, cutting edge facilities that you will be studying in if you come to the University of Adelaide. Uh, there's the Adelaide Health Simulation, the Dental Simulation Clinic and the Ray Last Laboratories, which I'll explain a little bit more about. Um, but the, it's um, really proud, we're really proud to note that the Adelaide Health Simulation is Australasia's most advanced and only accredited simulation facility in the Southern Hemisphere. So um, that's yeah, really exciting for us. The Ray Laugh Laboratories are located on our main North Terrace campus and they're home to uh, the statewide body donation program. And this is where our students in medicine and health and medical sciences will learn anatomy and practice their surgical skills. So if we look a little bit more into the programs now, starting on um, dentistry. So dentists work to improve oral health in our communities. Dentistry is a science and an art and it's a flexible, rewarding career um, for those who undertake it and it changes lives. 
We're currently ranked number one in Australia for dentistry and the Adelaide Dental School is celebrating its um, 100 year anniversary. This video I'll share with you um, uh, via KOM. Um, it will show you a little bit more about what I'm going to speak to at the moment and show you some of the simulation facilities and hear from some of the students that are undertaking the degree and, and how they're um, learning both in theory and practice. So I'll share that with you at another time. And we'll look a little bit more into the um, degree itself. So the program uh, will support you in becoming a highly skilled and patient focused dentist. Uh, it will allow you to practice using equipment in our dental simulation clinic and learn in Australia's newest dental uh, teaching hospital. You'll be able to explore the full range of dental therapies from complex restorative um, to preventative based treatments and tackle real life case scenarios in teams. You'll undertake extensive placements across the metropolitan and um, perhaps some rural settings and improve lives through our community uh, outreach program. Community outreach program is um, a, an, uh, a program that provides vital dental health care and other services free of charge for people in Adelaide that are experiencing homelessness or having some difficulty accessing traditional uh, health care um, services. So for these people, it really makes a huge difference in their lives, um, knowing that they're uh, going to be looked after and um, sort of made comfortable uh, with their dental health. For you as an Adelaide Dental School student, it really gives you a fantastic opportunity to develop your clinical skills and broaden your community understanding and give back um, to those who are less fortunate. Since launching the program in 2011, with the assistance of various volunteer groups, um, dentists and allied health professionals, we've provided care for over 400 uh, patients. And that's something that our students are really proud of. The Bachelor of Dental Surgery itself consists of an integrated course in each year level with clinical experiences being provided to you from day one. As a first year student, you'll focus on the initial phase of uh, patient care. And then through the middle years, you'll learn uh, about more specific dental disorders and human disease, develop and examine and manage patients with minor through to more comprehensive conditions. By the time you reach your final year, you'll be able to manage patients with a complex range of dental um, problems. Then on completion, you'll have a professional qualification as a dentist. Any students that are wishing to um, work in Australia will need to apply for registration with the Dental Board of Australia. And then once you're registered, you could go into private practice, perhaps start your own uh, clinic or join a partnership. You could work in government or school-based dental clinic um, or provide dental care uh, to people in the developing world. You could go into research, making new discoveries to improve oral health care. The Bachelor of Dental Surgery qualification from the University of Adelaide will, is recognised by the Dental Board of Australia, uh, Dental Council of New Zealand, Commission um, of Dental Accreditation in Canada, and also the Singapore Dental Council. So it could take you um, to a number of countries in the world uh, quite easily with the University of Adelaide qualification. So this picture is um, of the um, mannequins and the individual simulators in our simulation clinic. Um, it gives you, it gives students uh, the opportunity to practice the procedures in a technologically advanced um, environment. Uh, and it's really a sight to see um, the students working on these mannequins. Each simulator is equipped with one of the, um, the heads you can see there um, um, in front of the chairs, the dental equipment. Uh, and instruments as well as a PC and monitor. So um, it can be, uh, so you can follow programs um, as you're working. The haptic technology, as it's called, provides students with immediate tactile feedback. So we're talking about um, things like the depth of the drilling, um, 
and pain receptors and those sorts of things. Uh, so it really simulates what it would be like to be working on a patient, except it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Um, the clinic also uh, includes other um, areas that you might expect in a dental hospital, including um, a clinical de dental education unit, two dental surgeries, a plaster lab uh, where people do moulding, um, radiology and sterilisation areas, so we can learn to sterilise the equipment that we're using, as well as uh, virtual reality dental simulators and, and various scanning technologies. Perhaps the most extraordinary uh, feature of the dental clinic, um, and I may, Martin may have all, uh, seen this when he visited um, um, recently, uh, is the vending machine filled with artificial teeth. Uh, so it's set up like a vending machine would vend um, a, a can of soft drink or um, packet of uh, crisps, um, but it vends teeth. So, Students can select the type of tooth that they're working on from this vending machine and it will um, pop it out at the bottom. Um, so that's quite a unique feature of the um, hospital. So that covers off sort of what you might expect um, if you're a student here. Um, but there is some really important information that you'll need to read before applying uh, for the Bachelor of Dental Surgery, and I'm sure KOM will sort of help you through this process as well. These documents are our go-to guides for anything to do with uh, admissions, criteria, eligibility, and the process of applying. Um, so it's important that you are aware of these um, procedures. Uh, we update this information every year. So if you're not, if you're sort of thinking about maybe postponing an application, you could have a look at this year's, but make sure that you're checking back to the website to access the most up-to-date information because things can change from year to year and even mid-cycle. So it's really important to keep up to date with what's in the guide at various checkpoints along the process. So there is a specific guide for uh, international applicants. So make sure that you are looking at that one um, as the domestic one will not be applicable. So if we look a little bit more into what the process looks like to be this flow chart sort of depicts um, the key um, things that you need to be aware of. There's two prerequisite subjects. So they're from the science areas um, and so chemistry, maths, physics, and um, another group from biology, geology, chemistry, and physics. So um, just double check that you're meeting those prerequisites in collaboration with KOM, um, they'll help you through that. Um, the academic score threshold is equivalent to an international baccalaureate of 33, and I've popped down the Ontario school, secondary school diploma, uh, which is an 85, um, there is a table of equivalent uh, academic thresholds on our, in the admissions guide. So if you're doing something other than those, um, just refer to the table on page four, I think, of the admissions guide. So we have the, internet, uh, the, sorry, the English language requirements of an IELTS um, in overall band of seven um, and, a, and, oh, sorry, an overall band score of seven. So basically it's just seven. Um, the IELTS. Uh, International English Language Testing System is, uh, is the university's preferred proficiency qualification, but the university may accept other um, evidences um, in individual cases. Uh, this is a requirement of the um, Board of Registration, so in Australia. Applicants need to register, sit and achieve a competitive result in the UCAT uh, in order to be invited to an, attend an interview. There are some key, there's a key dates um, page on the back of the admissions guide, which um, will give you the date in which you need to register. As Martin said, you don't need to have sat the, um, the exam prior to your application, but you need to be in that process so that we have the results available to us when we're ranking to invite people to interviews. The applications um, for the Bachelor of Dental Surgery are at the end of June. Um, and so check in to make sure that you're getting your application by the deadline, no, as no app late applications will be considered. So the interviews are based, uh, interview invitations are based on the, um, the UCAT scores. 
and approximately 100 uh, interviews will be um, will be performed and they will be held over Zoom. It's a 15 minute interview and the criteria for the interview is explained in the admissions guide, but think of it like we are interviewing you for a, a job, but the job is a student of the Bachelor of Dental Surgery and as a dentist. So we're sort of assess assessing your um, <clears throat> aptitude for the profession. Uh, offers will then be made once every step of the process has been completed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and refer to the guide for key dates. Um, I'm just going to have um, a short break because um, I'm going. I feel a coughing fit coming on. <coughs> so, Martin. Can you just um, hold the floor for a moment while I just step out for a moment and have a sip of water? Is that that's okay? Not yeah, that's not a problem. So I, okay. again, um, can, can you hear me on your end? I'm, I'm, I think yeah. I'm, okay. Yes. Yeah, go we'll take a, a little drink there, Brooke. And again, thanks for everybody for joining us for uh, the session this evening. Um, a few people have typed in the chat box so if you have questions for KOM or perhaps even for Brooke, um, that's the place you could do it. I know somebody's asking about the UCAT ANZs, so I'll ask Brooke to, to expand on that one um, and see what her comments are on that. Okay, so this session's scheduled for about an hour, um, but obviously uh, we're here for as much time as everybody needs. Um, as you mentioned in the chat box, if you haven't applied, just contact at KOM Consultants. Toll free number is 1 877 318 8203. You can also reach uh, Sue Dorman, who's the events manager for everything uh, medicine and dentistry. Her email is sdorman at komconsultants.com. Okay. Um, there's quite a few questions coming in, so I, I will wait till Brooke comes back to, to address some of those questions. Okay. Uh, I can't tell you waiting for Brooke to, to step back in here. I can't tell you yep. I've had the privilege of, uh, are you back here, Brooke? Yes, I'm back. I'm back, Martin, yep. Okay, so I was just uh, telling some of the students to chat, um, to type in the chat box some of the questions. So we do have a few that are rolling in. I don't know if yep. you want to address them now. So some are asking about the UCAT. Um, yep. We might um, just whip through the medicine um, information because there will be some crossover and then we can okay. sort of catch capture anything that comes through from the medicine questions as well and cover them off in one go. Um, so the next the next part will just go through the medical uh, program uh, and then basically finish on a very similar slide to this, uh, uh, which sort of speaks to the medical uh, application process and then we'll cover off questions after that. Okay, sounds back good. Well, okay, so back to you now. great. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Uh, there's nothing like a coughing fit in the middle of a webinar. <laughs> Um, so yes, we'll look at medicine now. Um, uh, medicine is an intellectually rewarding and challenging and inspiring um, career option and it requires critical problem solving, uh, teamwork and integrity. Medical pr practitioners are, are passionately interested in wellbeing and, and work to, to actively protect and promote the healthcare of individuals and in our communities. They're dedicated to alleviating pain and suffering and caring for vulnerable, pe vulnerable people. So if that sounds like something that you want to be a part of, medicine might be the option for you. Our Adelaide Medical School has over 135 years of experience delivering medical education. And we're really excited to launch our new medical degree in 2022. Uh, so our medical degree graduates rate the degree um, uh, well above the national averages for overall satisfaction and skills and for gaining uh, full-time employment. The Adelaide, uh, sorry, the Australian Medical Council and the Medical Board of Australia Preparedness for Internship Study reports that our students have the knowledge and skills that they need to feel prepared when entering their internship, as you can see um, by the, um, the table on the screen. So the Bachelor of Medical Studies and the Doctor of Medicine is our brand new six year medical program that replaces our existing Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. 
The two sequential degrees lead to an Australian qualifications framework of AQF 7 and a master's level AQF 9. So our students will receive a higher level of qualification in the same amount of time as it would um, in our previous degree. So this is not um, a postgraduate degree. Um, as such, uh, there's still only one entry point being the Bachelor of Medical Studies and only those who successfully complete that degree at the University of Adelaide will be able to proceed through to the Doctor of Medicine. So students will learn in South Australia's premier um, health education precinct of the AHMS building, as I mentioned to you earlier and you'll be taught by practicing clinicians who are leaders in their field. You'll gain hands-on experience in Adelaide Health Simulation's state-of-the-art facilities, and you'll learn from curriculum-based real-world scenarios and global perspectives and experience clinical placements in a large variety of settings and locations in Adelaide. You'll have the opportunity to work alongside students from other disciplines uh, to prepare you to be part of a multidisciplinary team um, once you graduate. So you're working with nurses and allied health students and dentistry students to collaborate on things that cross over the, um, the areas. So um, to, that really mimics what it will be like once you graduate and have to um, work with those teams in your employment. So in the early years, um, students will learn the fundamentals of biomedical uh, sciences medical studies and the healthcare system. You'll start to be introduced to clinical scenarios and begin to develop skills in diagnosis and patient management. And uh, most of those uh, things will be uh, undertaken in the simulation facilities. You'll commence your first clinical placement in the third year and start to develop uh, your research skills. In fourth year, uh, you'll commence full-time clinical placement and start to learn more about the specialist areas of medicine. And then our sixth year will continue to prepare students for their transition to their internship year, undertaking electives locally, interstate and perhaps overseas if the travel restrictions allow. Uh, so the Adelaide Health Simulation that I've been speaking a lot about um, this morning is where you'll spend a lot of time. Uh, it provides practical training for, our, for health professionals um, that are already working, as well as um, our students using advanced technology to simulate uh, medical and surgical emergencies. The simulated scenarios are designed by our expert staff, at, which um, come from um, various health disciplines and this allows students to practice skills in a really safe environment where it's okay to make some mistakes, learn from them and then try again. Adelaide Health Simulation is a hands-on learning environment uh, and it has again the anatomically correct human simulator mannequins that are programmed to respond to medical interventions. So they breathe, they have pulses, um, they have various bodily fluids, including blood, um, and they respond to um, various equipment and also um, um, sort of, yeah, basically just simulate what a, a person uh, could do um, without having a person. But we also do utilise uh, paid actors to come in and play the role of a standardised patient in medical scenarios. Um, and this uh, allows students to immerse themselves in the scenario and get a real feel about um, what it's like in real life. It teaches critical decision-making and it enhances the students' clinical preparedness for when they go out to the workplace. Uh, another point to mention is that the simulation facility is designed um, to mimic the Royal Adelaide Hospital. So that allows students to become familiar with an environment and allow the transition to their placement and, and later on their work environment um, much more smooth, um, knowing that they know their way around the rooms and they're laid out very um, well, they're identical. So uh, very familiar. Again, this video doesn't look like it's going to load up. Um, so I'll share that um, with you at a later time.
We'll now look at the clinical placements, um, which is a key part of the um, medical degree from year three. Clinical placements are undertaken one day uh, per week and then increasing um, to full time in years four to six. Um, so students will undertake placements in a wide variety of specialist settings, uh, depending on what they're learning at a given point in time. So that includes emergency um, surgery, paediatrics, intensive care, mental health, um, just to name a few. Uh, this showed the, this slide depicts what it's um, what the sort of flow is to becoming a a doctor at the University of Adelaide. So it shows you very clearly there the Bachelor of Medical Studies, and then upon successful completion, you'll move through to the Doctor of Medicine, and then at that point, uh, you'll be eligible to apply for professional registration with the Medical Board of Australia. And then post university, you'll need to do one year internship at an approved hospital. Um, and then international students are allowed to apply for spots in those internships as well. Um, then you'll uh, be eligible to apply for general registration with the Medical Board of Australia at that um, point in time. Specialist trainings, sort of not um, something that we deliver here. Um, and that is um, sort of where these professional colleges come in um, to um, specialise. So as with the um, Bachelor of Dental Surgery, the, these admissions guides are the go-to for everything to do with admissions. Um, there is an international guide, so make sure that you're referring to the right um, information. Very similar, similar if not identical uh, entry overview um, with the variation of prerequisite subjects. There's one subject chosen from chemistry, maths or biology. Um, the same academic thresholds and IELTS requirements of seven, um, same application uh, timelines, the interviews themselves. Um, we do interview about 160 uh, applicants for uh, international applicants for medicine. Uh, and again, they'll be, they'll be uh, performed over Zoom this year. It's a 15 minute interview. And again, the criteria is explained in the emissions guide. So um, offers will start to roll out once the process has been completed. Again, um, uh, as with the Bachelor of Dental Surgery, that usually starts in October and then just rolls out as the positions um, are deemed available. Um, so, uh, entry into medicine and dentistry, no matter what way you look at it, where you're applying, um, it is a highly competitive um, process and we do encourage students to have a backup plan in case they don't get in the first time round. Bachelor of Health and Medical Sciences may be something that you'd like to consider as putting down as a backup um, if you're still wanting to come and study abroad um, here at the University of Adelaide. This gives you a bit of a snapshot of what's involved. It's a very general foundation studies in, um, in health. Um, it, it's followed by a major um, to provide more in-depth understanding of a particular area of interest. The medical um, uh, health majors are listed on the screen. Uh, so it covers everything from medical sciences, which is the more broad um, sort of subject area that a lot of um, students thinking of either going into med or postgraduate medicine or allied health sort of look at that. Um, but there's also more specific things like reproductive and childhood health, um, neurosciences if you're interested in how the brain, um, brain works as well. Uh, so we have two, um, two streams of this program. We've got the Bachelor of Health and Medical Sciences um, which is three years uh, full time. Um, and then we also have the Health and Medical Sciences Advanced Stream as well. The advanced um, option um, gives a more um, uh, stronger 
focus on on research as well as uh, entrepreneurship, commercialisation and innovation. Um, and also the um, health simulation forms one of the core topics in this um, option as well. Um, so for more information on those, um, speak with the KOM consultants or um, just view the information on our uh, Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences website um, and it will explain everything um, in more detail there. Just before we go into the questions, um, I'll just cover off what it might look like um, when you get here. Um, we know that the transition to university, especially for our international students, may seem daunting. Um, and at times um, you may need to seek out support. So we do have our Ask Health dedicated support services team that can um, that will help you sort of get started with enrolment and uh, orientation. And then through to graduation as well, we hold plenty of student events, breakfasts and uh, fun activities and peer support groups um, and connect you with your peers to sort of um, make you feel like you're not alone and you're sharing the experiences. Uh, if you do need to contact me at any point, um, uh, the email address is um, the askhealthsc at adelaide.edu.au. Um, so I can be reached um, through that email address um, or alternatively through the KOM consultants. Um, and then we'll just finish with um, uh, if you want to know more about any of the other degrees um, at the University of Adelaide, uh, in the area of health, come along virtually um, to our Health HQ uh, event, which is being held on the uh, 23rd of May. Um, so that you'll be able to hear from our academics as well as current students and see some of um, uh, what the program has to offer from their perspective and their experiences. Um, you can also hook up with our social media um, because there were, it will have some student takeovers so you can see um, some of the uh, activities in action as well. So go to that website there, um, the Health HQ um, website to register um, your virtual attendance there. Um, so that sort of concludes um, my part of the formal presentation. Thanks to the KOM team for uh, inviting us to present to you today. Um, that's their details there if you need to, um, to discuss anything further. Um, but now I guess um, from my perspective, I consider myself really lucky to live and work in Adelaide. And I hope that you've uh, been inspired um, today to apply for one of our um, health degrees and come and join us um, in Adelaide soon. So we'll open to the questions now, Martin. Um, so if you want to sort of triage them through, I'll be happy to answer what I can now and jot down anything to follow up for you. Thanks very much, Brooke. Um, I can tell the students, this is Martin Kelly from KOM speaking. Um, I can tell the students, I've had the privilege of, of visiting Adelaide, University of Adelaide um, on a number of occasions. And it is absolutely, not only a brilliant university, um, Adelaide as a city, as a destination, as far as lifestyle, it is an ideal uh, location for students. The city is big enough that you have everything that you need in a big city. It has the, the theater, it has the restaurants, it has the, the clubs, the coffee shops, it has the beaches. Um, but, but the other great thing about Adelaide is the lower cost of living when you compare it to the other major cities in Australia. So uh, the, the university itself, um, I, as you know from some students that have been to universities, they're not always in the downtown core of a city. So it, you have to get on buses and you have to travel a bit to get into where you want to go and have some fun. Uh, the university, the gates of the university are literally a stone's throw away from, from the main shopping district of Adelaide. So if whether you lived on campus, whether you lived off this, in the surrounding areas, everything is at your fingertips, not only the, the university and, and uh, your classes, it, but but anywhere you want to go, if you want to go to a restaurant, you want to go and have a drink with friends or you want to go for a coffee, that's all within five or 10 minutes walk of the university itself. Uh, but I'll just allow students to type in some questions in the chat box because this is the opportunity that you get to not only have a chat with, with myself or, or Sue is definitely online through the chat box, as you can see, she's answering a lot of questions, but, but for Brooke too. So 
Brooke, I'm just going to ask maybe um, there was a couple of questions while you were presenting um, yep. that I'll just reiterate to you and maybe you could address them. So, so a lot of students were asking about the school dates and, and what it looks like because here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're used to a September start. So going to the Southern Hemisphere, um, it's a strange thing for some of the students to look yep, at the beginning in yet. February yes. March. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah. Go on, Martin. Sorry. No, I was I was just going to say like so for the students um, going to the southern hemisphere. It obviously follows the seasons. the The school year follows the the, the seasons, the weather's and things like that. So yeah. February, March is is going their spring. Uh, yeah. No, it's going into your fall. Well, February, going into your fall. So February, February, March is um, is going into our um, yeah fall or autumn as we call it. Um, but uh, traditionally, that is sort of usually the hottest part of the year. Um, it, it, the, always the, the heat sort of um, shows its uh, face in uh, February, March. And so that's where I mentioned that festival time um, is a really great place to be in Adelaide because, uh, you know, the daylight saving times, it doesn't go dark until nine o'clock and you um, can really get out and um, uh, live the, um, the festival life. Um, see some shows and um, dining uh, out and those sorts of things. And so then um, sort of at the end of February, March, that's when our semester one would start um, with a mid-year break in the middle of the year uh, and then um, sort of semester two starting um, sort of June, July, going through until um, sort of Christmas time, I guess. That's when um, we wrap up for the year. And so it does sort of everything, one year of study fits into one calendar year. Thanks, Brooke. And, and for students going in, into a program like medicine or dentistry, uh, do they do they still receive summer holidays or is there clinical placements throughout yeah. the 12 months? That's a, yeah, that's a really good question, I guess. Um, uh, for our clinical degrees, we would um, be suggesting that students treat that as a full-time job. Um, it does work across an extended academic um, calendar year because of the clinical placements, and that will that will vary from time to time. Usually in the first couple of years, it's fairly light on in that area, um, and so there is a lot more flexibility, but there is still a lot of content to get through, and so we'd sort of be suggesting that students are treating it like they would a job. So, you know... Um, sort of studying between the hours of um, sort of 8.30, 4.30, 9 to 5 sort of thing. Um, and then the clinical placement um, will determine what your holidays will look like. But usually um, the uh, tutors and academic staff can give you a pretty good idea of what that looks like um, with plenty of notice. Thanks, Brooke. So if, if there's any questions, if you want to just chat or, or type them in the chat box, that would yeah. Um, but while we're waiting for them to come through, maybe you can um, clarify how many seats are available for international students in both the dental program as well as the... Yeah, yeah the sure. Um, so the medical, um, I guess at the moment, I guess to address um, something that's, that's uh, the common theme with international recruitment at this point in time is um, the, you know, will we have international students on shore for 2022. Uh, so one thing that I do sort of um, urge you to consider is if you want to be considered, you need to follow the process. I know it's a lot of time commitment, um, money perhaps invested into it, uh, as well as some emotional investment as well. Um, but if you want to be in it, um, you've got to go through that process. And we can't sort of control that endpoint, what that looks like for students coming in. Um, similarly, um, the numbers of um, places available for international students, um, that is going to be a little bit of a, um, let's see um, how many people have deferred the places from last year because they couldn't come. Um, so the numbers that they are published in, the numbers of places are published in the admissions guide at the moment. So you can refer to those as, as a guide. It's roughly around 30 for um, each, each program. Um, but what that actually looks like for 20 to, the 2022 intake, we're really not sure because um, there's so many um, COVID-related um, uh, things that we need to consider. Thanks, Brooke. And, and, and that is, that's the question that um, 
everybody's yeah. uh, the students in the yes. room. It's really yeah, absolutely. what the academic can, year is going to look like. And, and yeah, uh, I can tell you that we are kicking off um, and we know that it is um, something that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. And so we are sort of uh, in the process, our internationalisation team is starting to collect data from um, the academics and the program areas to see what, what the delivery mode might look like for 2022 with sort of, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C. Um, we've, you know, we're sort of waiting for the federal budget to come out and look at um, and some of those strategies to see what in the um, return um, the, the travelling situation might be, um, whether, you know, so where does, where does students sit? Does that come, do we allow students to come back before we open to tourism and those sorts of things? People with a genuine reason to relocate, um, we're hoping that um, the strategies will be favourable um, for, for that um, uh, sort of area. Um, but again, yeah, it's really, we can only sort of, sort of put into place what, what we can do, and then it's really the government that we're just waiting, and, and I guess um, from your end as well, what that looks like for getting people physically here on campus. So thanks for that. So yeah. we encourage all our students to apply for these programs and anticipate yeah. it's going to run as usual. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for the students that haven't started the application, certainly um, we would encourage you strongly to, to start that soon because of the UCAT yep. deadlines and whatnot. Correct, yeah. For, for students And there that, are deferral options as well. So you can defer your place for up to two years. Oh, that, that was going to be my next question. So yeah. for yep. students that are made an off 2022, whether it be medicine or dentistry, they can defer that to the following yep. year uh, without great. any penalties. Okay, yep. that, that's, that's great. Because not all, yep. all universities allow students to do that. So that's... That's unique yeah. for Adelaide and it's certainly a benefit to our students here. Um, some, there was a student that was asking a question, uh, how a medical student from Adelaide able to get residency in Canada and get license? Um, mm. So that's- so with that, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Brooke. So with, um, with registration in countries other than um, Australia, we'd be recommending that you contact the um, medical board associated with Canada, just to make sure um, that you're fully aware of there may be another exam that you need to sit. Um, um, I, um, I, you know, for dentistry, it's very clear cut. Um, it is recognised, um, but for medicine, um, particularly with the new degree, it would be in, um, really important for you to start seeking that information out um, in the country that you are um, sort of planning on working in. Uh, whether that be straight after the degree or um, uh, sort of down the track, touch base with the with the um, relevant medical board and um, sort of find out what other things that you might need to do to be able to practice um, in Canada. Okay, thanks for that, Brooke. And, and another thing I would encourage students to contact CARM, so that's the Canadian Residency Matching. Um, okay. So they're the ones that match all uh, domestic students into residency, as well as international grads coming back into this country. So yeah. uh, reach out to CARMS and, and you can ask your questions there. But certainly when you're going into medicine, um, you have to do your due diligence on your licensing process back in the It's not a guarantee. Yeah. Many students manage to come back, but there are some that choose to stay in Australia and, and open up their life in Australia in a, a wonderful profession uh, within that country and some choose to go to other countries in the world so um, certainly you have to go in with open eyes if you're looking at medicine no matter if it's Adelaide or any other medical school outside of Canada for dentistry it's a much more seamless process with the accreditation between the Australian Dental Association and the Canadian Dental Association uh, essentially all you're going to do when you finish off your dental program at Adelaide is you come back into that and you're going to write the dental examinations just like any Canadian grad from a Canadian dental school. So um, I hope that that sort of helps you out, uh, Aisha, with your question on the, the residencies. Uh, so uh, there's another question here, Brooke. Uh, keep, the questions are coming in, so I keep losing where they are. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Somebody was asking, some schools are delivering the first semester online. Uh, is Adelaide looking at that approach or is that something? Yeah, 
Um, as I mentioned, we're in um, sort of kicking off that piece of work around what um, the delivery modes will look like for our commencing students in 2022. Um, as an example, this year, um, I mean, the decisions were a little bit um, more rushed, I guess, um, to sort of um, put together something that we could offer. Um, for our dentistry students, it was a very clear um, um, directive that all students needed to be physically here because uh, of the um, way that the program is structured and um, the clinical um, skills side of things. Um, uh, the dentistry students needed to be um, in Adelaide ready to go by the start of semester, otherwise they would need to defer their place. Um, for medicine, they were um, the program was a little bit more flexible in that the online um, the content could be delivered online for much of the studies, um, and so um, for medicine, um, international students were able to commence last year um, uh, online. So what that looks like moving forward, I'm, um, I can't give you an answer today, um, but hopefully in the coming months, um, sort of. Um, before we get too far into the application process, um, we'll have an update on what that might look like. It has to get signed off by the, um, each school in the faculty as well as then up through to the, um, to the vice chancellor. So um, it is a pretty um, uh, intense process of, um, and, but we need to, but we are aware that something needs to be um, clear so that people do know what they're signing up for. Okay. Um, and and even for the students that are on right now, even if you want to unmute your microphone and, and speak through the audio, that we welcome that. So, mm -hmm. um, but as, as we do that, here's another question. Uh, what's your dental program? How much of that uh, is hands-on experience? Mm. Yeah, from, um, from day one, um, students will immerse themselves in the simulation environment. Um, so um, students are in that um, simulation um, centre constantly. Um, so majority of the program is um, linking the learning directly to the clinical skills. So um, we do sort of say that anyone coming into the program needs to have a um, certain level of um, manual dexterity. So thinking about um, your hands and how you're going to work within a very small space that is the mouth. But um, students will have plenty of opportunities um, right from day one um, to hone those skills in the, in the dental health simulation. Okay. Um, Miriam has a question. Is Adelaide not accredited to practice right away in Canada? Miriam, can, can you just please clarify if you're looking at medicine or dentistry? Um, so, so none of the schools are really accredited right away to practice in Canada. Everybody from all the schools, wherever you're graduating from, you have to come back and write your licensing examination, just like any uh, graduate from a Canadian professional program in medicine or dentistry. So uh, maybe if you just want to clarify, Miriam, if you're looking at medicine or dentistry, we can touch on that a little, little more. Aisha has a question. Uh, the grade 90%, is that for all four years of high school or is it just for the year 12 subjects? And is there any reference to students with IB qualifications over high school diplomas? Okay, I can, I can um, outrightly say there's no preference to any um, qualification over another. It's all equivalent and ranked accordingly. So no bias is given to any, um, any uh, academic threshold. Um, in relation to the scoring, um, it's just whatever your score is at the at the end. Um, does that sort of answer your question? So we won't look at sort of um, your anything below sort of your final year. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'm not one hundred percent sure on how your curriculum is um, sort of developed. Uh, sort of, um, but it's in in Australia, it's sort of like their overall score, which is a selection rank for university purposes. Okay. Uh, oh, and Miriam's, so it's dentistry Miriam's looking at. So the, the University of Adelaide is an accredited dental school within Australia. So what that means is Australian Dental Association, Miriam, has uh, a reciprocal agreement with the Canadian Dental Association. So as long as you graduate from accredited Australian school, yeah. which Adelaide is part of, 
then they will accredit you when you come back into Canada. However, I, sh I should back that up. You're allowed to write the dental examinations when you come back into Canada, just like a graduate from a Canadian dental school. So you don't have to go through any residency or any other bodies of that nature. You can come right in, uh, register for the dental examinations. And as long as you pass those with success, um, that's you off and running with your license in Canada. Uh, somebody's asking for dentistry. Does the UK ANZ have a cutoff? Mm. That's a good question. We get it all the time. We don't have a cutoff per se. Um, basically, it depends on who has put in an application for the year that you're applying. And we rank everybody that's applied um, basically from highest to lowest. And whoever sits in within that top 100, then that will be the cutoff for that year. It's not consistent, it changes from year to year. It's not a number we publish and it's not really a, a helpful sort of indication for how much effort you put into the test. So we sort of encourage people not to get too hung up on the cutoff. Um, if you sit within the top 100 ranked um, UCAT scores, then you'll be invited to attend an interview. And if you um, sort of fall below that, um, then you won't be invited to an interview in that year. Um, and you'd be encouraged to try again the following year. Okay. Um, there's just one question I think I, I passed over and I apologize, Abigail. Uh, Brooke, maybe you can help us out with this one. Uh, would you recommend medical program for students interested in pursuing a career in mental health, such as becoming a psychiatrist? That's a question, yes. Abigail. Yes, so um, certainly anything that you need in, in medicine that is a specialist sort of section of medicine, you'd need a medical degree um, to, to undertake those. There's no other pathway than to do a medical program. So if, if you think about cardiologist, oncologist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, all of those different specialist areas require some sort of foundation medical um, degree to allow you then to do your internship and then specialise. Great question. Okay, thanks very much, Brooke. Um, I'm just conscious of the time. So, so we're, yeah. we're over the one hour mark right now. Yeah. Um, but certainly if, if there's questions, keep them coming in. Um, we're yeah. here for as long as you need, but uh, yeah. uh, I know we sort of slotted this for an hour. So um, yeah. what we can do is just wait a few more minutes to see if there's any Yeah, sure. Questions. Yeah. Okay. I think there is another meeting scheduled in here in sort of 10 minutes or so. So um, I'm okay. happy to stay, stay and chat. But um, if, the, as I mentioned earlier, um, your questions can um, either go to um, KOM um, and then we can sort of resolve them um, via that channel or alternatively um, that ask health SC at adelaide.edu.au. You can get come directly um, to me as well. Okay, uh, here's one that's just come in about interviews and what time of the year do our interviews held? Yeah, um, so the interviews are usually held, so so the UCAT um, ANZ is usually sort of around July and then uh, we look sort of more like September-ish for the interview periods. The key dates um, are listed in the admissions guide and it will give you an understanding of what that process looks like, how we invite you, what the um, invitation will look like, what you need to do when you get that interview, um, interview invitation. Um, so the, the, um, I guess the take home message is to look at that key dates table, um, jot down those in your diary or pop them on your fridge or those sorts of things and check back to the guide um, as it's sort of approaching those um, time periods to refresh yourself with the process and what to expect because um, once you have, uh, once we communicate with you, there will often be a, a time in which you need to respond to that communication. So um, make sure that you know um, sort of those dates and be aware that you might get something that you have to respond to in a time sensitive manner. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, do you think broader restrictions will ease towards the end of the year? And that really, um, it's that's a, a difficult question to answer at this point. I yeah. think I, I, yeah. I think that would be difficult for yes us to answer um, as far as the Canadian borders are concerned as well too. So yeah, yeah. Um, what I can um, tell you is that within Australia, I don't know what you've been seeing 
sort of in the global news, but Australia at the moment is a really good place to be for us. Um, there are very few restrictions. Our life is sort of fairly back to normal. We do have sort of snap shutdowns every now and again for three days um, if there is a community transmission. But we're talking in very small numbers. Most of the states sort of sit within um, sort of under 50 cases of COVID-19 um, sort of in each state. Um, and most of those are contained, most of them, if not all, are return travellers that are quarantining in our many hotels. Um, and so um, it's very well contained here and the vac vaccination program is sort of um, rolling out. Um, it's actually fairly um, slow, which is a bit of an issue at the moment, but, um, but it is rolling out. Um, and we've sort of opened up travel to New Zealand. Um, what that looks like again with um, students coming in for 2022, that is something that we really have to wait for the government to decide. Okay, thanks, Brooke. And and what what we do with some of our clients this season, we're hoping to do with Adelaide, is perhaps you know in, in four or five more weeks we could have another quick little session just yes. to give students any any updates that we have. There, yeah. there may be no updates on how the borders are going to yeah. open up, um, but yeah. certainly just, just to allow them now. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we do have um, uh, we considered sort of having a particularly a dental student um, jumping on with us this morning, but placement makes that difficult um, to sort of manage at, at times. Um, but we, we could also sort of tee up maybe a QA and a with a, um, with a Canadian student um, who's currently studying as well, um, sort of along the process as well at some point. Yeah, that would be great. So um, I, I haven't seen any questions come in the last couple of minutes, so... Yeah. I, I think what we can do is we can um, sort of wrap it up here. And yeah. uh, myself and, and Sue from KOM Consultants and the whole team from KOM Consultants, uh, thank everybody for joining us this evening or this afternoon or wherever you are. Um, Brooke, I really, truly appreciate your time. I know it's, it's early for you. Um, so I'll just turn my little video on here somewhere. I, I should be yeah, you're on. Some, you're on. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I can't yep. see where I am, but currently I'm on. So uh, th thank you for your time, Brooke. That was a, a ton of great information. And, yep. and we can do this again in about four or five weeks time. Yeah, okay. great. Great. All right, then. Thanks, Martin. See you, everyone. Okay, stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.